So Tesla just had their earnings call. And while I'm not that into the stock, I do think it's probably a pretty good investment for the long term, although short to medium term, it might be a little rocky, uh, which is kind of what Elon said himself. We did get several updates about Tesla's full self-driving program that I wanted to talk about here today. Uh, and most notably, I wanted to start with number one, it looks like there's a delay in the AI5 hardware. So if you're not familiar, Tesla used to call their self-driving hardware, so like the computer chip mostly is what we're talking about here, but you can also think about the camera that are connected to that computer chip. They used to call it hardware two, hardware three, hardware four, and then they updated that nomenclature to AI4 is the current full self-driving chip that you will get if you buy a Tesla today. And so of course the next upgrade to that will be the AI5 computer and probably will come with that some upgraded cameras, higher megapixels, maybe different camera placements. All of that is just totally guessing, but we're mostly focusing on this chip that takes the data that comes into the car, processes it, and lets the car make decisions about how to drive around the world. Now, of course, there was no official release date for this chip, but for probably a year or so now, Elon himself on X has talked about when this chip was gonna come out, and we've had multiple indications that around the end of 2025, we'd start seeing the AI5 chip. Now, in past hardware upgrades, like when Tesla went from hardware three to hardware four, it was a slower rollout, so you'd see the new chip in certain certain models of vehicle, most notably it started with the Model S and X, and then it would come to other vehicles and if you wanted it in like a Model 3, you had to wait a lot longer than if you wanted the hardware 4 setup in a Model Y because it came much sooner to the Model Y. And while we would expect the same thing to happen with AI5, so we were hoping it was going to start coming out around the end of the year, maybe the first half of 2026, we would think that it would maybe be in one or two models, maybe it would first be shown in the Cyber Cab and then come to Model Y and then come to other vehicles. Now I say Model Y because that's the current Robotech taxi platform. But anyway, it looks like that's been delayed all the way to the end of 2026, probably leaking into 2027. So Elon said AI5 is a spectacular chip, hopefully in volume production at the end of 2026. It's so powerful that Tesla may have to nerf it to some degree for markets outside of the US because it blows way past the export restrictions. Now I tried to look up some of these stats to see if it would be simple. Of course, nothing coded into law is simple. Uh, and a lot of what I'm about to tell you is like from AI summaries and stuff, so definitely take it with a big grain of salt. And if we look at the NVIDIA A100 at 312 teraflops, it is a controlled processor, whereas the NVIDIA H100, which Tesla has talked about, uh, Elon's talked about getting a bunch of these for XAI uh, for their training, this is a thousand plus teraflops and it is fully restricted. So it looks like the AI5 computer is above that 300-ish teraflop. So if we look at Tesla's hardware 4 computer, it's somewhere around 122 TPP, whereas if you look at the NVIDIA A100, which is partially controlled, it's around 312 TPP. And if you look at the NVIDIA H100, it is 1000 plus, which is fully restricted. So we've been expecting AI5 is gonna be about five times more powerful than hardware four. And I have a whole video about that. I will link above if you wanna check that out for a little bit more information. All right, that was crazy. I didn't wanna get into all that, but it was super interesting uh, to kind of take what information we could um, away from the comments that were made there. There. So unfortunately, it looks like AI5 has been delayed. But my other thought here is that Tesla is probably saying something like this because I know there's people out there who are like, oh, I want a new Tesla and they're nerdy like me. And they're like, oh, I'm going to wait for the next hardware upgrade. It's been a few years since, you know, hardware four came out. I want the best full self-driving performance. So I'm going to wait until that AI5 chip comes out and then I'll get my Tesla. Well, now they're kind of reiterating, Tesla is reiterating here that, look, it's going to be a while before AI5 comes out. We're going to have full self-driving solved on AI4. We got to take it with a grain of salt though, because it's not solved. So Tesla doesn't know if they're actually going to solve it until it actually happens. Now I can guess that if you want a new Tesla, you probably want to wait for AI5, but that decision has become more difficult. Now I can also guess that you want your personal information deleted from the internet, and that's where today's sponsor, Delete Me, comes in. Data brokers are sneaky entities online collecting your personal information, like your email address, your home address, your phone number, your family members, and all kinds of data about you. They then turn around and sell this data, and they don't even give you a cut when they make money off of your personal information. Well, with Delete Me, a service I have personally been using for over two years now, you can get your personal information deleted from these data brokers. Delete Me saves you hours and hours of time going around to these websites, requesting takedowns, and getting your information deleted and removed. I recently got back a privacy report from Delete Me showing they found my information on even more websites and they got it removed from those websites for me. When your private information is floating around on the internet like this, it can lead to identity theft, phishing, or other scams. So this is an incredibly important service. 
Use my link down below to save 20% on Delete Me right now and check it out. They have plans for you or they even have family plans so you can keep yourself and your family protected all at the same time. Save time and get your information deleted from the internet simultaneously. Thank you so much to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Now, what I also find related to that is retrofit. So Hardware 3 on Tesla vehicles, according to Tesla, is probably not going to be capable of unsupervised full self-driving. And so it was mentioned that Tesla is going to retrofit hardware three cars so that they'll have this capability. Now, we don't know how the retrofit is going to happen. We don't know what's going to be changed. Uh, we don't know uh, what Tesla's metrics are on what unsupervised is exactly going to constitute, although that has become more clear in that it probably means you can sleep in the car and it can take you A to B, which is great. That, that sounds good to me. Um, and so retrofits were brought up again, thanks to the uh, questions from shareholders. And the question was, is there any news for hardware three users getting retrofits or upgrades? Will they get hardware four or some future version of hardware five? And the response was kind of not that great in my opinion. They basically said they want to get unsupervised done on hardware four, and then they will go back and see what to do about hardware three. The focus is to get unsupervised out, then we'll go back and see what more work we'll need to do. So, oh, that's tough. Now, Hardware 3 owners, ever since the one mentioned that they were going to get a retrofit, uh, have not stopped, and they should not stop. They're still bugging Tesla all the time, saying, hey, you know, what's going on? Give us our retrofit. And they're totally justified in doing that. Tesla told them back when they purchased their vehicle, if you purchase full self-driving, it will be capable of full self-driving eventually. That didn't say if we can figure it out on your hardware or anything like that. So Tesla's on the hook. They got to do something for these hardware three owners, but I've been saying they're going to put this off as long as they can. The longer they can put this off, the more hardware three cars will naturally be off of the road and the less work and money Tesla will have to spend to get this problem solved. Tesla continues to offer free full self-driving transfers. So if people do get a new car, they can transfer their FSD from their current car to their new one. Absolutely free. They started now doing this in uh, Europe and I think China as well. Uh, so, so this is something they're trying to get you on the new cars. Again, I'm not saying you should do that or you have to do that. I do think it's it's a good deal if your car is, you know, five, six, seven years old anyway, and you're like, okay, I kind of want a new car and you get that, you know, perk, you can transfer that FSD over. It's something I would take advantage of. And I actually have done that before. I've transferred my FSD from a hardware three car to a hardware four car, but it's not something everyone wants to do. And so Tesla is going to have to solve this. Improvements in FSD lately have led to more adoption. There's been a 25% increase in the take rate since they lowered the prices on full self-driving. Now, this doesn't mean there's a 25% take rate. It means whatever the take rate was, it increased 25% when the prices came down. So that's good news. Good news for Tesla. It's good to see. But what's crazy about this, Tesla said that cars on FSD are 10 times safer, which should be a huge motivator. And it makes sense. You know, if you know that you're 10 times less likely to be injured uh, while driving just by using FSD, you'd probably be more inclined to use it. But Elon said that half of Tesla owners who can use FSD, so half of the Teslas on the road that are capable of full self-driving have not used it one time. This is crazy to me. I can't even believe it. How could you own a Tesla, own this car that has this capability and not try it one time? I understand not liking it. I understand not wanting to use it. I understand not wanting to pay for it, not wanting to buy it, but not trying it one time. Tesla has sent out so many uh, free trials of full self-driving for people to try. And you, you don't even turn it on. You get the free trial. You get the email. You get the pop-up in the car that says, hey, you have, you know, free full self-driving. Turn. Now, there is a, a barrier to entry here. You got to go in the menu and turn it on and accept and, and click this thing. I mean, it takes like two seconds, but any of those barriers to entry uh, are going to, I guess, result in this half. I mean, that's crazy. That blew my mind. I cannot believe it. Now, I did post on X and said, yo, you guys got to gamify this. I actually was on with Farzad a few months ago, um, and we were discussing, like, getting people to use full self-driving. And this is an idea we all kind of came up with at the same time. Somebody suggested, hey, you should, you know, give them a bonus uh, if they use full self-driving. And I was like, oh yeah. And and maybe if they use it for 10 miles, they get this. And then 20 miles, they get this. And so we kind of came up with this idea and I posted that on X. And I do think it's a great idea. If you use FSD for 50 miles, you get 10 miles of free supercharging. You use it for hundred miles, you get a free burger at the diner, uh, you know, the new Tesla diner, something like that. That would bring this take rate, in my opinion, pretty close to hundred percent. People love free stuff and that would make them use FSD like immediately. So Tesla did say they had a successful RoboTaxi launch, uh, more than 7,000 miles in Austin with no notable safety critical incidents, you know, whatever that means. Uh, they, they do restrict the cars to 40 mile per hour roads though, which I found interesting. And sometimes they said RoboTaxi wants to go onto faster roads and they stop it from doing that. And so I think that was an example they were giving of like an intervention that they have to do or a disengagement that they will perform, but it's not safety critical. It's just their preference is to not use those roads. And and so they do have these disengagements, uh, but they are saying there's no notable 
safety issues, which, you know, I guess is whatever Tesla wants it to be. But rest assured, if there was any crazy accident, we would have heard about it a thousand times by now. You know, I posted the video where the tire of my robo taxi touch a parked vehicle. And that was like all over the news. I couldn't believe it. It was on so many websites and it was like the first robo taxi accident. It was so funny to me that, uh, I mean, sure, I guess technically I didn't really consider it an accident that the rubber, you know, touched that other car, but, um, that was, that was funny. So, you know, that if anything big, bigger than that happens, we're going to hear about it all over the place. So robo taxi, is also waiting for regulatory permission in the Bay Area, Nevada, Arizona, Florida, and a number of other places, which is huge. And Elon said that Tesla will probably have autonomous ride hailing available to half of the population by the end of 2025, again, subject to regulatory approval. That's crazy to me. And it's kind of what we hoped to expect to see, because if Tesla's approach to FSD works, where they don't need to HD map and pre-map and have all these you know sensors and stuff, it should scale fairly rapidly once they're able to start using it. Now we're always skeptical. We don't know if that's actually the way it's going to go, but we hope that's what's going to happen. They reiterated several times that they're being super cautious, but that's what they think is going to happen with this rollout. Now think about where we are today. We're at like the end of August. We just have this uh, relatively small, it's not terrible, but a relatively small part of Austin where Tesla Robotaxi is operating. You know, they increased the area one time, then Waymo actually increased their area. So it's a very similar um, square footage that these two are covering. Uh, but Tesla said they're going to greatly uh, increase the area in excess of what competitors are doing within a couple of weeks. And they said they will increase to more than 10 times the current operating area. So that's really fast. So we should see within two weeks, you know, two weeks is the meme that we're going to have way more uh, robo taxi rollout in Austin. Now with that, they need more vehicles because there's still no more robo taxis on the road than there were before. But I think they're probably waiting to get rid of those safety passengers. We'll see how that goes. Now there was also a question about personally owned vehicles in the robo taxi network. And this has been a huge part of what Tesla has talked about the entire your time. And again, the answer was kind of weird. Immediately they said, <laughs> Elon said, we haven't really thought about that. Like what you've been talking about this since like 2019 and you haven't really thought about that. Um, but they did give a little more information. They said they need to make sure it works when vehicles are fully under Tesla's control first. And then they're going to move on to, you know, building out that model to let us owners put our cars uh, on a robo taxi network and kind of earn money that way. Confidently next year, people will be able to add or subtract their car from the Tesla fleet. There will be some criteria like a checklist like you do for Uber or Airbnb. So think about your tire tread. Uh, the car's got to be cleanly. You don't want it to be, you know, smell bad, stuff like that. So you will have to kind of enroll and be approved for this. I think knowing Tesla, it'll be very easy to get approved, which will be good and bad. Um, but they will have that checklist you'll have to do. Exciting times. This is another thing that I'm kind of like super skeptical is ever going to happen. I mean, especially for me, I'm out way far in the woods. Is my car going to drive, you know, 20 minutes to the nearest city and then start robo taxing people around? And then how's it going to charge? Um, it's going to like, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. But in a downtown city area, a little more likely, again, especially if the cars are actually capable of unsupervised, no one in the car self-driving, as we saw with the first customer delivery, then this becomes a little more plausible, right? Now, along with this, Tesla said that as safety improves for FSD, and we've heard this before, they will lighten up your eyes being laser focused on the road. And people, this is like number one complaint, uh, people, what they do is they're turning off, Tesla is seeing that people are turning off full self-driving to use their phone. So they'll turn off FSD because it nags at them. They'll drive with their knee, they'll use their phone, and then they'll turn FSD back on, which obviously is ridiculous. I'm sure if you look around while you're driving, you see most people around you are using their phones on, you know, non-Teslas or whatever vehicles. Um, and you shouldn't be doing that. But I think if you're going to like, just say someone's going to do it no matter what, it's probably safer that FSD is on than off if they're going to be using their phone. So, uh, Tesla's working on like getting these things relaxed a little bit, which again, like sounds so wrong, but if the car is up to the task and is capable, it's the right move. Tesla is also working on significant software improvements. They're going to increase the parameter count 10 X. Now, Elon said this is very tricky and they are kind of choked on memory bandwidth, but he thinks it can be done. And we've seen in the release notes, they were going to do three X parameter increase. Then on X, Elon said they were going to do a four or 4.5 X parameter increase. Now they're all the way up to 10 X uh, parameter increase. So parameters are values in the neural network that get learned during training. Like they're the weights of the AI. More parameters mean more model complexity, capacity, and potential intelligence. And the implications of this are a better ability to learn complex patterns like rare driving situations, edge cases, possibly more accurate perception, planning, and prediction, but it's going to require more compute to train and run. This is where Dojo is probably going to come in or Tesla will be paying NVIDIA lots of money for more chips. This is like giving your full self-driving car the brain power of a Formula One team instead of just one high school learner 
with their learner's permit. So what about unsupervised for personal use? I wanna get in my car, go to sleep, end up at my destination. It will be available by the end of this year in certain geographies, but Tesla's being very careful. We've heard this every year for how many years now? Cool, like great. I mean, I'm glad that you say that, but like this next, by the end of 2026, we better have freaking robo taxis all over the US. We better have personal full self driving cars, right? I can make a YouTube video uh, from the back seat while my car drives me, you know, from point A to point B. Um, if this stuff isn't happening by the end of 2026, I don't know, man. I don't know, Tesla. I don't know. You can't just keep saying next year forever. You've been saying it for 10 years. Things are actually happening now. We have robo taxis with no driver in the driver's seat although yes, the safety passenger. So I, I feel better about it than I ever have. My skepticism is coming down a bit, but only a bit because we've been hearing these same things for so many years. As of right now, every Tesla in the US and Europe autonomously drives to the end of the production line. Cars will deliver themselves to customers by default by the end of this year, unless the customer doesn't want that. You can specify you don't want it and then Tesla will deliver it the traditional way or you come pick it up. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. You will see me in the next video.